What's going on guys? I'm back with another video. I am joined with Louie, Brandon, and Taikira, and we are all going to be talking about and giving our thoughts on the NBA making its return. The NBA has officially announced their return plan for this summer, and the season will basically go start in July and finish in October. That is the plan. So the official details of this return include 22 teams will be going to Disney World in Orlando to finish off the season from July 31st to October 12th. They're each going to play eight regular season games to figure out the final seeding before the playoffs begin. The 16 current playoff teams, those are the teams that are definitely in, and the six other teams that have been invited back to play in those eight final regular season games include the Pelicans, the Blazers, the Suns, the Kings, and the Spurs from the Western Conference, and then the only team from the Eastern Conference that was invited back was the Washington Wizards. So those are the six teams besides the current 16 playoff teams that are already in. Those six teams, their job is to try to catch the eight seeds in each conference. So basically, when it comes to that, there's what they're going to implement basically a potential plan to acquire the eight seed in each conference. This would only come into play if the eight seed is not up by at least four games or more after those eight regular season games are done. So if the eight seed has a four game lead or more on the nine seed, then the eight, whoever is that eight seed has it locked up. There's no plan. But if it's a one, two, or three game tie up between the eight and nine seed, there's going to be a plan for that final spot. So the way they're, they're doing it is basically they're going to unlock a mini play in tournament and the eight seed would only have to win one game and the nine seed would have to win two games. I'm not exactly sure if that means a best two out of three series or if that means the nine seed has to win two straight games in a row. I'm thinking it might be that just based off the wording from the official statement. But either way, there's going to be a play-in. That's basically the format that we've uh, been presented with. We're basically just going to give our thoughts now on what we think about that. Let's start with Louie. What do you have to say? I'm just so happy the NBA is coming back. But the only thing I don't like about it is that whole ninth, eighth seed thing. I just don't understand why, like, we know, I just don't understand why we can't just have eight regular, regular seeds just play, just go to the playoffs. I don't understand why if you have a three game lead, you have to play this, this ninth seed again. It's ridiculous. I don't see why they, should, they have to play these, these games, but it's the way it is. What I'm most excited though is the finals is going to be in October. So that's like playoff time for baseball. I think it's going to be a really great time. This football we got going on the way. I just can't imagine how much action there's going to be in October. For sure. For sure. Uh, Brandon, what do you think? Uh, first off, I want to thank you for having me on the show as always, but I am so excited the NBA is back. I've been looking forward to this day for months on months, and I've been praying, please, the NBA come back. We need the NBA playoffs, and it's finally here. But first thing, I was obviously very thick-headed on the format. I said jump right to the playoffs. It's the most efficient way, most safe way, the fastest way to crown a champion, which is the goal. But I didn't know the details of how Adam Silver is going to put this together. And shout out to Adam Silver, because what he did is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm very fond of this format. I was so against the 1 through 16 seedings, because I don't know why we need to change. Just because we're going through a pandemic and we had a suspended season doesn't mean we need to rechange the seedings. But in terms of the new format, I absolutely love it. Because regardless, we need to get the TV revenues and the players' contracts to 70-plus games. That's how they get their full salary. So these eight regular season games accomplishes that, which is huge. I love that. And also, it just keeps the teams that were in playoff contention, it keeps them giving them a fighter's chance. I mean, I didn't want to hear complaining. I didn't want to hear excuses. But the teams that were outside looking in, you're not going to make any noise anyways. But at least here, you have a fighter's chance. And for the teams in the one through eight seeds in each respective conference, you need some games under your legs. You can't go into the playoffs with no, with no like, games played in four months, just have four weeks of training camp, that's not going to cut it. The eight regular season games, I think it's basically going to be, especially for the top seeds, just getting your legs under you. I expect the superstars to play 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes at the very most. But I'm just so happy the NBA is coming back. And I love the format because everyone's got a fighter's chance. And going to the eighth and ninth seed, I love that because it's for entertainment, it's for the fans, and it's just more like things we can look forward to. In terms of that, it is – the nine seed has to win back-to-back -back games, and the eight seed just has to win one game. It's obviously not perfectly fair because an eight seed could get knocked out after having a better record. But the nine, the nine seed, it gives you a fighter's chance because we couldn't play all 82 games. It is what it is, but it's for TV revenue. It's for the fans, and I'm for it. But, again, I am so happy we will see NBA playoffs this summer. For sure. Good stuff. Takira, what about you? 
Uh, I might be the only one who kind of has an opposing opinion on this, but it's just because, um, one, you know, they're going to be in Disney in Florida, and it feels like a big AAU tournament, which, you know, that's where we used to go and play AAU nationals and stuff at, and so the formatting, and then I'm still, like, without the fans, it's going to be a little weird, you know, watching at home, like, you know, what are the sound effects are going to be like? I feel like the fans make the playoff experience, experience that much better, you know, when Dame Lillard hits a big shot and he walks off and you don't have the fans going crazy and stuff like that. Like, what is that going to be like to us viewers? And then on the other hand, um, they said that some coaches might be excluded and that came out today, like uh, Popovich, because he's older, those who might be at higher risk. So what is that going to be like for the players if you're going down to the end of the bench and you know uh, you don't have your coach there that you typically talk to and speak to about things in game? So I feel like it could play a little bit of a mental mind you know, mind effect on the players as well. Um, and I, I think that's a little weird. Like some of your coaches won't be able to attend and then mentally like getting yourself uh, back into that realm. I know a lot of the players obviously wanted to play fans wanted it back. And for that very reason, I think it's going to be cool. And I do like the formatting and how strategically they put that out during this time, Adam Silver, he's just been phenomenal with handling situations with speaking out with giving us step-by-step -step updates on what they plan on doing and so I am excited um, about the formatting that is but I think the experience like I said is going to be weird it's going to be different and of course new for us but it also shows uh, a different spectrum of the NBA because like they've been trying to start the season later and been talking about ways to start the season at a different time. So now, you know, here's a chance to do it and we can see how we kind of like it. I want to piggyback off the home court advantage. I honestly kind of like that. It's a little different. The fans, obviously that, that hurts the atmosphere. It hurts the players. It's an adrenaline rush that is unexplainable. If you were an athlete, I am myself. There's just a different atmosphere. It's a different adrenaline rush when you have fans. But in terms of the home court, I think this championship will just be even more accomplished, not only sitting at like having four months off, but in terms of having no home court, you don't have that competitive advantage that you originally did. Those top seeds, usually in the NBA, we could predict the conference finals almost every single year. Based off health, we could predict the conference finals. And a lot of that has to do with home court advantage. Home court advantage gives the top seeds a bigger advantage, but that's not there this year. So it really is a lot of mental toughness that – is something different. It could give us more of a chance to see an upset. I mean, I'm not hoping for an upset. I want to see LeBron hoist his fourth, but. I it, agree. Later, maybe, yeah. <laughs> it, but but this, is, this is an opportunity for a bottom seat to make a little noise. You're, you're right. I just kind of, I got to feel a little bit for the top seeds, the Lakers and the Bucks. They work so hard to get that top seed, to have that home field advantage, to, have, to play in front of their fans throughout the playoffs. And now it's all a waste. They, like, they could be gassed. I'm saying, yes, they've had a couple months off but now a team that has their kind of coast to the playoffs at the Clippers like they had a great season but Paul George and Kawhi just coasted through the season they I believe are in way better shape than the Lakers who've worked so hard to get that top seed and as well as well as the Bucks. so yeah a, a bottom seed will have a better shot which is great for the NBA because it may, it's way too predictable but I do feel a little bit for the top seeds that worked really hard to get that home field advantage that won't be anymore but in terms of the home court, I mean, excuse, well, having a better seed, you're, they're still getting the better bracket. Like, if the season ended right now, the Lakers' bracket compared to the Clippers is entirely different. I mean, the Lakers have the um, the Grizzlies to open up, and then versus the Clippers have the Mavs. The Mavs are not going down easy. They're not – I mean, I, the Clippers are going to win that series, but it's not going to be easy. They're not going to coast through it in four games. I could see that series, series easily going six games. And then, the, and then the Clippers, I believe, play the Rockets next, assuming the Rockets make it, and then would be the Lakers. Like, that's tough compared to the – the Lakers are going to have to go, get, go through the Jazz or the Thunder. I mean, that is a tremendous difference in terms of bracket. Same, same with uh, the Bucks in the East. I mean, they got the Orlando Magic first round. That's easily the worst team in the playoffs. So they still have the better bracket, which is a huge competitive advantage. But in terms of no home court, I like it in terms of – like giving each team like a more fair opportunity, but obviously the fans in terms of the adrenaline rush is totally different, but especially the NBA finals. I love that it will be a neutral court. Obviously, again, I want the fans in terms of just the atmosphere. They do bring the atmosphere. I've been watching tons of old games. It, you could really see how much like the fans like are involved in the game. I think we can say that, but we also have to put into consideration like how much 
time that these players have had off. So in comparison to teams and stuff like that, like who's going to win, I think it's so up in the air. Uh, some players like, um, I believe it's Kyle Kuzma was like, well, I don't have a court at my home. So what have I been doing during this time? We have to think about the effects on these players' bodies and older players like that of a LeBron James, who, yes, we've seen his workout videos. He's been taking care of himself. But we also have to think about uh, just not being injury prone and stuff like that during this time. I think that's so important, which is why I was kind of, you know, on the scale of like, ah, I'm happy, but at the same time, like, you know, is this going to be great for these players necessarily having that, you know, that four months off in the middle of, you know, which could have been a high for a lot of these players and then go back to that pounding and all that, you know, so rapidly to me, because I mean, let's face it, July is going to be here before we know it. The pandemic started back in March and here we are already in June. You know, the time has been going by. So I just feel like, yes, maybe because they know now, okay, I can start prepping my body and I can get back into that space. But man, uh, just injury prevention is going to be huge, especially not playing at your home court in your facility where, you know, you can get it in and stuff like that and, you know, work to that advantage to be right as, you know, when you step on that court. Yeah, for sure. Sort of just going off of what all of you said, uh, definitely, yeah, this season finishing it is going to pose a tremendous amount of challenges in a variety of different ways to these players, whether it's physical, mental, and then, you know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Takira, that, you know, without fans, you know, and also Brandy, you mentioned how important, you know, th that sound of, you know, the cheers of, in the crowd are, you know, as an athlete. I, I saw something today, I don't know how serious they are about it, that they're considering using just like uh, NBA 2K sound effects. In, in the stands. I don't know if they're actually going to follow through with that, but maybe that's something they'll consider just to get some sort of sound going in the arena. Otherwise, I wonder, are these players, is everyone going to be mic'd up and we're going to hear like some, you know, really good trash talk between these players like we've never heard before? So. Um, you know, there's different ways they can go about that. Um, but yeah, besides that, and then also, Louie, your point, you know, you, you know, sort of don't think the eight and nine seed playing is necessarily the most fair thing. I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, yes, the entertainment value is honestly probably the most important thing at this point. Um, and honestly, a big part of it, whether the NBA wants to admit it or not, is because they want this guy, Zion Williamson, uh, to get a shot in the playoffs because Zion being one of the you know youngest, brightest stars in the league, this new format definitely gives the Pelicans a tremendous shot at sneaking in and getting either just eclipsing the eighth seed themselves or at least getting the ninth seed and earning the shot to play in. But one thing I just want to sort of jump to is, so now that the season is going to be going from July to October, they're talking about starting the next season in December, which would then sort of skew the traditional start time of when the NBA season starts. That's kind of an interesting dynamic there. So now we got, you know, they've had some time off now, but by the time this season ends, there's only about another month to month and a half so before the next one kicks right off. So in a sense, the team that wins this year has a chance to win again in less than 12 months. You can win two championships in pretty much less than 12 months, which is pretty crazy. Um, I think, honestly, the NBA should consider just keeping this schedule uh, here on out because as it is, I, I personally, I've seen other people say this, but I think Christmas Day is a perfect day to open up the NBA season because as it is, it's arguably one of the best days for NBA basketball. There's always five or six amazing games that day, and it's a holiday. So I think that would be a great way to start the NBA season, but they're talking about early December. Regardless, though, I think what's key is that with that new start date, we're going to have NBA basketball deep into the summer. And, you know, assuming baseball, you know, comes back next year for next summer, um, baseball won't be the only sport going on during the summer. You know, you're going to have the NBA and I guess the WNBA will both make a return in the summer. So you'll have two sports going on besides baseball. So I think that will just make it a little easier for sports fans. I, I like the idea of it, but as mm -hmm. me, a big WNBA fan, and it's already hard to find the channels that our WNBA teams are playing on and stuff right. like that. It's going to become – I'm not going to say a competition because we already know who won. Like the NBA is going to get the ratings, the viewers or whatever all day over the WNBA. And that's like, unfortunate. I feel like, you know, it's the women's time. So if the NBA in fact does that, 
then maybe they should think about shifting the WNBA season as well because them overlapping in TV time and okay, the WNBA games, a lot are on CBS Sports Network, but then a lot are on ESPN. If we had to choose between watching Portland go up against the Lakers or the Washington Mystics go up against the Connecticut Sun, it's, it's a no-brainer what game is going to make ESPN or ESPN2. So uh, I'm, I have kind of a biased opinion towards that because I like to watch the ladies during the summertime. And it's already, like I said, it's hard enough, you know, fighting um, for them to get the coverage in which they deserve. But then again, Christmas Day would be lit. The NBA ratings will go through the roof. You know, <laughs> everybody's at home. They're watching. We're tuned in. We got our new jerseys on that we just opened up from Santa. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm absolutely cool with the idea of it. But I think they would have to really work out a way in which the WNBA and the NBA could coexist to the point where both can get the recognition in which they deserve. I agree. They should then consider starting the WNBA season like, you know, a few weeks after that or in August and have that. Uh, or yeah, and probably they should try to keep the WNBA season primarily in the summer so that it doesn't conflict with football, which starts up in September. So if the NBA season can end in early July, then yeah, perhaps mid July start up the WNBA season. But exactly. here's the one thing about that though, I don't think it's enough time for the players to really recover. Imagine, imagine playing all the way to October and starting a month and a half later. Like I don't know if dynasties are going to be a thing anymore because you're going to be gas you just won an NBA finals a month ago like three months of playoffs almost like that's a lot to ask oh well we already know that um load management would be through the roof right yeah exactly yeah uh, load management is a load of crap but if that's what Kawhi Leonard wants to do that's what he's, that's what he's gonna do so that's basically our thoughts on the NBA returning as far as the format goes as a whole we're all happy that the NBA is coming back um, but we'll just see how this format plays out. I think on paper, it's probably, it's probably pretty good, uh, but we'll just only time will tell really to see how it plays out. Just real quick, one by one, let's just give our quick playoff predictions. Who do we think is going to come out of the West? Who do we think is going to come out of the East? And who do we truly believe uh, is going to be crowned the champion this year? Uh, Louie, let's start with you. I think it's going to be Lakers-Bucks. Um, I think the Lakers will get over in seven. Brandon, how about you? Um, I'm here to tell you the Bucks. If I didn't already know. I'm here, I'm here that the I'm here to tell you the Bucks will not get out of the East. I I, I believe it's going to be the Boston Celtics. I like the way they're coached. They're deep. They have multiple closers. And in terms of the West, obviously, you know, guys, you guys know I am the biggest LeBron guy you'll ever come across. But this year is LeBron's best chance to win a championship. I said that in previous videos. I believe he has the the right supporting cast to win a title, and it's in his hands. I believe whatever the Lakers are going to go as he goes. Obviously, this season. The Lakers' offensive efficiency rating is second in the NBA when he's on the court. When he's off the court, it goes to second to the worst. It shows how much value he brings to the team. I agree. Takira, what do you think? Um, first of all, this is something I meant to do in the beginning. I wanted to pay homage to Vince Carter, who's – amazing career you know came to an end so I just wanted to shout him out because you know I was a huge big uh, Vince Carter fan coming up but um I agree I have the Lakers coming out of the west um huge Lakers fan but I also uh, have to agree with Brandon's point where if LeBron is the best player on the floor there's nobody who's going to be able to stop the Lakers and that's just in my opinion and especially in a series um and then as far as coming out of the east I know. I'm like, I don't even want to like throw a name out. It's a tough one. Um, if Milwaukee plays how they played, you know, most of the season and it's carryover into the playoffs, I'll have Milwaukee coming off. And hopefully Giannis has grown from last year's playoffs and uh, he knows how to work it on the inside and um, how to facilitate and pass out of those double teams and then repost. I think that would be very beneficial to Milwaukee. And then guys like Chris Middleton knocking down shots and stuff like that, I think they'll be pretty hard to beat. So I'm going to say it for right now. I think the East is a little harder. I feel like the West is almost a given. Like, come on now, Lakers. But uh, that's just my opinion. Got it. Yeah, no, I definitely think uh, – I truly believe the Lakers are going to come out of the West. And then with the East, I'm really it's, – it's a toss-up between the Bucks and the Celtics. But uh, – I might honestly have to agree with you, Brandon. I think the Celtics are very underrated. I think Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, uh, especially Jalen Brown, he's really uh, – he's been on the come up this season. Uh, and the two of them, you know, along with the supporting cast they got, 
uh, they could definitely pose a threat to Milwaukee if they're not careful, especially if they don't play Giannis the way, you know, he's best at, you know, the way he can be the most efficient. If they try to, you know, let Giannis do too much, then they might find themselves losing to the Celtics. But there are teams like the Raptors that you can't count on either. So the East is kind of a toss-up. But if I'm putting my money somewhere and I'm going to bet on it, I'm going to say it's either Milwaukee or the Celtics. But it, for me, it's, it's too tough to call the East. It, it's, it really is. But I think it's ultimately between those two teams and then the Lakers coming out of the West. And then in the finals, I think whatever team honestly comes out of the West is going to end up winning the finals, whether it's the Lakers or the Clippers. Um, I think one of those two teams are going to win the finals uh, ultimately. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Those are our thoughts on the NBA return proposal. Uh, it looks like it's going to happen. It's pretty much uh, it's a done deal at this point. So the NBA will be starting up again in July. Uh, Brandon and Ty, do you guys want to just like talk about your stuff? Yeah, so uh, I got Instagram, the Falco Takeaway. Uh, I post daily sports content. It's all my opinions. I bring friendly guests on the shows all the time to have any discussions, ask them questions. But for you out there who like my content or want to bash my content, please, positive or negative, all comments are good comments. Even if I don't know you, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Give me a follow. I will always give you your rebuttal. And again, even negative comments, I appreciate every single comment. Thank you again. Definitely check out Brandon. I'm going to link him in the description down below. And uh, Takira, you want to talk about some of the content you produce? Uh, so I have a podcast. It's called Life After with Tykira Carter, where I talk about the transition from being a college athlete to being in the real world. Uh, so my podcast can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Buzzsprout streaming. Uh, so uh, I really enjoy my podcast. We talk about things like mental health and all those different aspects of life. And then as for my Instagram, my Instagram name is Tykira, T-Y-K-E-R-A dot Carter. And I have a series called Checking In, where during this time I've been checking in to see what uh, athletes, reporters, creatives have been doing during quarantine and just getting to learn a little bit more about them. Cool. Yeah, no, so I'm definitely going to link all that in the description down below, especially now, you know, with the lack of sports, you know, if you want content, there it is for you guys. Uh, definitely check them out. Those are our thoughts. If there's anything you guys wanted to add to the conversation, drop it down in the comments down below. I'm going to be checking those. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And that's pretty much going to do it for this one. Catch you on the next video. Peace out.